Hi, it's been a while I uploaded last time a video and I'm also late with the Infuray P2 Pro video, but here we are. So let's see what's inside the box, let's do some tests with it and see how it compares to a few other models. Unbox time. As you can see, the box design also slightly changed uh, since the P2. This is the P2 and this is the P2 Pro uh, packaging. The magnetically attachable uh, macro lens, so-called micro teleconverter, also comes in a very nice uh, separate box. This is an optional accessory. You can get the P2 Pro with or without the macro lens. And of course, through my channel discount, uh, if you buy both together, you will have also an uh, even greater discount thousand years later. Inside this beautiful packaging first we find an envelope looking thing, very well packaged everything. Inside the envelope we will find the usual carrying pouch, good material, good enough to support and hold and protect the uh, P2 which is insanely small. More inside the envelope we find um, like a quick user guide and this is like a product certificate. There is another compartment here, slightly longer. If we open this, we will find in there only a USB-C extension cable. This is very handy if you are using uh, the P2 Pro with a holder. And finally, there is a little deeper with this pull-out ribbon cable. You can liberate the P2 Pro. At first sight, looks exactly the same as the ordinary P2. Let's peel this protector off. What I see uh, at first sight, the only difference is this outside window here. The lens is basically underneath this. This is a crystal that is basically transparent for infrared light. Apparently this is more transparent also for uh, visible light because it's not so reflective as the P2. Let's compare this for a second. As you can see, this is the ordinary normal P2. This is the P2 Pro. As you can see, the window on the P2 Pro, it's black because it's basically absorbing light, so letting light in. This one is more reflective because it's basically reflecting the spectrum of visible light, only allowing to pass through the um, infrared light, the spectrum that is the thermal spectrum as well. I think in case of the P2 Pro, they had to replace this window to a type of crystal that is transparent to a more wider range of wavelengths uh, closer to the infrared in order to reach the 550 uh, Celsius uh, measuring capability. Now let's take a look at the microconverter. Comes just as well and just as nicely packaged as the P2 Pro itself. They took care of the quality of the packaging as well. Inside this little box there is nothing else, no instructions, you don't need instructions for a simple accessory like this. This has a lens protector, nice uh, germanium lens. This is magnetically attached to the P2 Pro. which is a big advantage uh, in order to get a nice and simple tool-free accessory that will increase the range of usage of the P2 Pro. It's very simple, it's magnetic, so you don't have to clip it on it. It's basically goes there and stays there very strongly. I can shake it, it's not gonna fall off. No tricks, <laughs> simple and magnetic. Now, if you wonder if this accessory works with the ordinary normal P2, Let's see, this is the ordinary normal P2. 
No, it's not going to magnetically attach because it's not designed for that. It doesn't have inside um, a piece of iron, something that can uh, make the magnet attracted. As you can see, I can put it there, day and night, it's not gonna stay there. Now, it's another question if it works at all with the old ordinary P2. Um, I will test it uh, in a moment as well. Draw it on a paper with water that this is the P2. There is the teleconverter. And I'm going to hold it with my hand on the P2. Then let's move the P2 closer to that uh, main board. As you can see, it works. That chip uh, is for five millimeter. The reason why you need uh, a teleconverter basically uh, is because the P2 itself doesn't have a manual focus. This also not focusable. It's just an additional lens that will add close-up uh, macro capability for the P2 Pro. But if you can afford, and if you want slightly better image quality, then you start from T2, or if you can afford the T3 series, it's obviously better. It always depends on your budget. It doesn't, doesn't mean these things are bad. It's designed for a different budget segment. This is also a remarkable and nice uh, tool. It's incredibly small and incredibly portable. If that matters for you, then this combo will be absolutely fine for you for a while. Let's see uh, the specifications of this. So here's the specifications of the P2 and the P2 Pro, basically side by side. As you can see, there is nothing changed exactly the same from the resolution to down to everything. The only difference is the temperature range in favor of the P2 Pro because of the different uh, athermalized uh, prime lens material. The wonder of thermal imagers. Having a thermal imager is like having superpowers. And now let's see a short side-by-side uh, -side recording between the P2 and the P2 Pro. So, this part has recorded the two exactly identical phones simultaneously, one having the P2 and the other having the P2 Pro. For some reason, as you can see, the P2 Pro have uh, much more contrast, um, showing much more temperature zones on the hand and even the hairs. Now this part is not going to be super visible, but you can see I'm going to do some short circuit. As you can see on both of the image, uh, that little uh, comp defective component is like illuminating immediately. You can see it, but you cannot see it yet clearly which part is that on the motherboard. So definitely you need um, the teleconverter lens. So now putting it on the P2 Pro, getting closer. And as you can see on the P2 Pro immediately, uh, you can see clearly which component. Uh, this component is, is a small chip, uh, it's about uh, five millimeter across. So it's very small, but you can see big and clearly. So if you repair phones, um, teleconverter lens is going to be exceptionally useful for this device, and of course, in this low price. Now moving on to other subjects, uh, as you can see if I move around uh, in the room you can see that the P2 Pro again have uh, much more thermal contrast in comparison to the P2 it is also probably thanks to that um, different type of uh, thermalized uh, like outside window of it. So now looking out on the window, um, you can also see that in the city all the details are maybe slightly in favor uh, in contrast for the P2 Pro again.
So I can say with comfort that the P2 Pro have slightly more contrast and slightly better performance even on its own than the P2 Pro. If you have seen my older videos, you know that I'm offering uh, great discounts on all Infuray cameras, including this one, uh, together with the lens as well, in a better price than basically anywhere else you can find most of the time. So if you are, if you are interested, all you have to do is uh, join my Discord server. Um, I also leave a link of my Discord server invitation in the description or you can find the link also on the channel homepage um, banner image on the corner. Just click on that, um, join my Discord server and ask me personally in a private message and I can tell you the actual prices and the availability of the models. So as some final words, if you really are on the budget and you really need a thermal imager for your work, then I can highly recommend the P2 Pro. And the good thing, there is only dollar difference between the two. So if you have to choose between the P2 and the P2 Pro, I would just ignore the P2 and choose the P2 Pro with all the confidence. Now for the remaining time of the video I'm going to put up some recordings in different environments like um, short circuit test, isolation test, just going around the house, some street view. So I hope you guys like the video. Some like and some subscribe will be appreciated. See you guys in the next one. This part was recorded with the macro lens, and that's the tip of my finger. You can see those black spots coming and disappearing, those are the sweat glands. Whenever they sweat a little, they try to pull down the skin and they dissipate immediately. But you can see this macro lens is so capable that you can see such details as well. In this part I'm still using the macro lens on the P2 Pro, um, as you can see getting close to the board even the smallest components are clearly visible. Um, as I apply the voltage the, this 5mm chip lights up like a light bulb under the thermal camera. Here, now without the macro lens, just a normal P2 Pro. Um, street view, heavy traffic, and you can see the engines of the cars, the tires as they eat up everything. This is some view from the 10th floor over a parking lot. Uh, as you can see, the distant objects are not so clear because of the very wide field of view of this model. Um, for viewing distance objects, uh, the T2 series and T3 series are much more suitable. Now this part is going to be very interesting for those who want to use the P2 Pro for uh, building inspections to see uh, thermal isolation. Now what you are looking at, uh, that's the ceiling of the top floor of the building. Basically it's um, 50 centimeter uh, concrete and uh, tiles. Basically the outside layer is a layer of uh, tiles uh, that you can walk on obviously and the rest is about 45 centimeter concrete uh, with steel reinforced uh, concrete beams that's supporting the ceiling. Um, that you can see all those bars 
are basically um, the hottest parts are between uh, the uh, steel reinforced concrete uh, um, beams basically. So if there is heat uh, leaking out or heat coming in or cold coming in, you can clearly see this um, in all kind of environments and all kind of type of uh, house materials. So this yeah, can be used for that very well. Playing a little bit hot and cold water from the sink. Here we are looking at a boiler. Um, you can clearly see the hot and the cold water pipe and you can also see how well, for example, a boiler isolating uh, its own um, heat. And for last, what you see here is a tip of a soldering iron. Uh, it was set to 480 Celsius, but on the normal range was just showing until 189. When you switch to wide range, uh, it's going to show you the. It's going to unlock the level of the 550 Celsius range. So now it's showing 387, 390. I don't know if it's the fault of the uh, soldering tip. Uh, that is not uh, completely for, um, heating up for the correct uh, temperature or um, fault of uh, not being calibrated uh, to the material and the environment um, as it should be sometimes because you can manually calibrate, calibrate for uh, the environmental circumstances. So if you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.